Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eirik Arneson. Welcome to my studio in Florence, Italy. This is a new tutorial series which will focus on casting an acrylic resin, particularly the brand Hydro Resin. We will be casting my sculpture King of the Rusted Crown over the course of four to five videos. We'll get into everything that there is to do in order to create a finished display ready casting of your work. This includes attaching separate pieces, painting of course, and how to mount your work to a base. So let's get into it. First challenge we face is collecting our materials and tools. I really like having everything ready to go so that I don't have to run out and buy something and delay the process. If it happens, it happens of course, but I prefer to have everything ready to go. As a one-man band, and I envision most of you out there are as well, we want everything ready to go to minimize stress and potential failure. Anything we can do in order to streamline our process and make casting easy for ourselves, we should do, in my opinion. So, materials and tools. I was missing some shots for this video and shot the missing footage while on vacation in Norway, so there'll be some change in scenery, but that should be nothing if not exciting for you. A work surface is important, either a sacrificial table or a table covered in plastic, as this process will undoubtedly get a little bit messy for us. Working on the ground, I don't advise, as your back will take a beating. I've done this before and it's not, not something I would recommend to anyone. The tools we need are brushes, spatulas, disposable cups and containers, a bucket of water to clean with, scissors to cut the fiberglass reinforcement, and you probably should have some rubber gloves or plastic gloves as well. You can see in the video I wear gloves because resin is very sticky and adheres to your hands and particularly your nails very well. The materials we need are the resin, of course, in this case the brand is Hydro Resin and fiberglass reinforcement fabric. The resin itself is an acrylic resin which means it's water soluble before it sets. This makes cleanup easy or easier. It comes with two components, a powder and a liquid. The two must be mixed together in order for the material to set up. The mixer ratio is flexible. At least two parts powder to one part liquid is recommended with this particular brand, but this may vary depending on what brand you use. I don't really mix according to mix ratios anyways, I just mix the thickness I need for the step of the process I'm at. Work time does change because of this. I find that I get around 30 to 45 minutes working time when mixing the resin to a thickness like the one you'll see me mix it to here. It's the thickness that I prefer when applying the material into the mold and it's kind of like a peanut butter or Nutella chocolate spread type of thickness, for those of you who are familiar with what those are. I'll get into the reason or reasons for what thickness I mix the material to in a little bit. Because the material is acrylic resin, you can clean it with water as acrylic is water soluble, as long as the material hasn't set up, of course. It's good practice to not let your brush and tools die because you let the resin set up on them or in them. I mix with a flexible spatula for cooking because it cleans off really easily and worst case scenario, a new one can be bought for really cheap at almost any supermarket. They also introduce less air into the mixture than, for example, a drill mixer or a whisk would. You'll notice that in this video I'm not wearing a mask or other safety equipment other than gloves. The gloves and the apron is there really only to protect my clothes and keep my hands clean. 
Should I need clean hands quickly for whatever reason, I can rip the gloves off fast and fix a camera issue or whatever issue I might have with the cast. I don't wear a mask or a respirator, but I do work in a large open space. The material is acrylic resin and doesn't release gases or anything else that's nasty during its setting up process. In that respect, this is a much safer material than epoxy and polyurethane resins. The only thing I think you should consider wearing a mask for is when you are mixing the material, as one component of the material is a powder. Any sort of dust or powder, even plaster powder, is not going to be good for you to breathe in. I'll leave this decision up to your discretion. I suggest that before working with any material, that you get a hold of a technical data sheet for that material. Whoever you purchase the material from, if it's a reputable source, will have the technical data sheet on hand and should be able to provide them for you. Always read through these before beginning to work with any new material. Remember, you are responsible for your own safety, so take that safety seriously. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, consider liking it and subscribing to the channel for more videos. I put out a new video every Thursday, so stay tuned for next week. If you want to support the channel, watch the full one hour video, which this is an excerpt from, fill to the brim with instruction and in detail descriptions of what is going on. Visit the link to my Patreon page in the description below of the video to learn how. Until then, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.